So let's take a look at this spread. It's quite interesting. If you look at the text on the left page, which let's say that's the start of the story, you'll see that it's quite loose in its letting, whereas the right page, which let's say that's the jump, you know, the end of the story, is tighter. Now they're using the same style sheet called body, and it's also even, as I'll see, it's actually locked to the baseline grid. I can check that down in my measurements palette. Yet I have this effect of looser text for the beginning of the article and tighter at the end, which is quite common. How could I do this? In Quark Express 7, uh, it wouldn't be possible to do that with baseline grids because there's one grid throughout the entire layout. But in Quark Express 8, it is possible because you can have a page grid for each master page. So let me show you what I mean exactly. If I go to the View menu, View My Page Grids, and then zoom in to where the two pages join together there, you can see my left page has that loose grid indicated there by those red lines, and the right page has a different baseline grid indicated by green lines. Now, that's powerful enough, but Quark Express 8 allows you to have a different grid for each box even. And why would you need that? Well, take a look. We have these caption boxes that run throughout the magazine, these little sidebars, which include text of different sizes and all that kind of stuff. I would like them to look the same. But I can't tie them to my page grids because the page grid is too big, and in fact there are different page grids on each page. So what I really need in this case to really make my work consistently good looking would be a custom grid style for each of this kind of box. So I'm going to go ahead and create one. You'll see there's a palette over my palette group that I'm going to use, which is my grid styles palette. I'm going to create a new one. I'll call it quotes in this case. And I'm going to fill in all of the options, like leading, manually, and these things. Or what I could maybe do, might be smarter, is to use the work I already did. I've created up a captions style sheet already. So why don't I load the settings from that style sheet of captions, which you'll see is applied to the text currently. Why don't I load that and use that as the basis of my grid? No sense reinventing it, right? So I'm going to take the settings from captions and take a look. You'll see that uh, my settings will change over then to reflect the settings that come in from the captions style sheet. So that's very powerful. But what would make it even more powerful was if I could link the style sheet and the grid style together. So if I made any changes in, in the style sheet, it would reflect in the grid. So I'll choose that option here. So I've got a kind of dynamic grid style set up now. It's selected. Let's take a look at how they look. And they show up with the magenta lines for the box. I'll apply the grid style, and you'll see now the new grid style is applied. It aligns, and I'm going to go in and make sure it stays aligned by selecting that text. And in my formats menu, I'm going to lock the text, but not to the page grid, which is one option, but to the text box grid, the other option. So now let's say my art director comes along and says, I don't quite like the leading on those boxes. Could you make it one point larger? Well, that would be easy. I'll click down there on the measurement palette. But of course, everything jumped. An 11-point leading won't fit in a 10-point baseline grid. So it jumps down to every second line. I want to adjust that. I'd like to make all those changes. But it's a lot of changes to go back through. Even just the step of redefining the style sheet, because now I've stepped outside of my style sheet by applying that local formatting. In Quark Express 8, take a look. You'll see if I mouse over this new arrow, it will show me which changes I've made locally, which are not in the style sheet. And if I want to redefine my style sheet to reflect that local formatting, I'll simply click on the arrow. And when I do that, take a look what happens. Click on the Update Style Sheet button, and the style sheet was redefined to fit the local settings. 